What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jim Mint, and we are here in Singapore at the XM Studios store slash gallery. It's a huge gallery. We're going to do an entire walkthrough. We're going to look at every single piece, although some pieces are at SGCC, which we're going to do a video on as well. So let's go ahead and take that tour. All right, guys, let's make our way into the gallery. There are a few different ways to enter here, but I love this big XM logo with the forever lighting going in the back. And as we move into the gallery, we can see the XM wall here showing what quality control, the painting process, the packaging. But let's, before we get into it, start at the other entrance here. And this looks like it's intended to be the main entrance for people in the mall. So this is the third floor of this mall. As you can see, they have XM logos over there. You come up the escalator. And here you have some larger than life uh, prototypes for Disney. First of all, we have the Batman Shogun sitting down on throne. And then you have the, uh, the Disney characters here. You got Goofy, Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse. So some stuff that they've done for Disney, Chipmunks. And then we have some of the licenses in the back here for anything from Marvel to Godzilla to DC. And just starting at that wall, showing the whole process from sketch to masterpiece, we have concept art, we have the war machine piece, 3D modeling, giving it the T pose where the arms are just down to the sides. Here's the Shogun, you get the idea. So here's a, another closer look on how things are made. Got the gray prototype here before paints the assembled prototype. So just intended to give those who come to the gallery an idea of how this all comes together. All right, now the centerpiece so far, this piece is so much larger than I thought. The Venom Arise, standing so tall on this base with the little statue cherubs on the bottom, symbiote tendrils everywhere. And we have a menacing growl from Venom with the green saliva on the tongue. We gotta go around to the back of this, of this bad boy. Got the spider emblem on the back here. And this is just a massive piece, this tendril poking out the back. We have the destroyed base here. I mean, you see it in pictures next to, uh, next to someone, but it doesn't really do it justice. So there we have Venom Arise. In the back you have some offices. Then we have from Absolute Carnage, Carnage in quarter scale. This one much a much more smaller footprint compared to Venom, but you've got the vials where it looks like the symbiote has escaped. More wild tendrils. And then from Absolute Carnage with the swirl logo on his forehead. I'm loving these pedestals with the lighting and everything too. It really highlights the piece so well. And man, you can already start to see just some of the gallery in the back here. Take a look at the rest of Carnage. You see the spine poking out of the back, more of the tendrils. All right, guys, this is actually the first ever XM Studios piece, man. The Captain America with the flag. I didn't realize that this was the first ever. Over 10 years old, Steve Rogers, classic cap. You can tell the technology has come a long way since then as far as texturing and such, but man, what a nice attempt at a first piece which would set off over 300 plus statues that you're gonna see today. And of course you gotta have, next to Captain America, Iron Man. This was always my favorite quarter scale Iron Man piece because it was comic book based. Typically you see very uh, movie inspired statues in quarter scale, but this one was so classic. You even had the Tony Stark face that you could see behind the mask here. I owned this one for a while. I did a review on it on the channel. Make sure to check it out. All right, now making our way into the gallery. I don't even really know where to start. Let's, uh, let's start on the wall right here. I'm loving the displays here. We have a couple of pieces that I've actually reviewed. So here is Apocalypse in quarter scale. Man, 
massive piece here. I'm not sure if this was a production piece or if this was the prototype that I reviewed. It's got like a pinkish kind of tone on that paint there. The large weapon. So much detail on the sculpt on this piece. So you have Apocalypse. And then we have Archangel, which there were two versions. There is the other version on display as well, but this is the Uncanny X-Force version. You got those metal wings, him reaching in the sky. You can check, I actually did review the prototype of this piece. This is one of the newer from the X-Men line too, the Nightcrawler, the Kurt Wagner, got the purple plumes, you got Danger Room Sentinel arms swirling around as he's dodging them and a huge sentinel hand. I didn't even notice it was the hand until I realized those were the fingers that he was standing on. I like the motion that they give it here. Like he's teleporting from inside of the sentinel's grasp. The tail holding onto the sword is a nice touch. Modernized look, you don't really see that kind of look for his outfit. And then the Magneto, this is the most recent Magneto from the Krokoa line, breaking out of a sentinel head. You can see the plant life has started to take over. And then a huge sentinel head on the side. And you got Magneto, got the little flower coming out of the uh, sentinel eye there. Moving on to some Fantastic Four pieces. Ben Grimm, The Thing. Looks like he's on top of some type of destroyed spaceship. Could be part of the Fantastic Car. Got those classic blue trunks. The rocky skin. And there goes that portrait. Love seeing Fantastic Four pieces. This is the first time I'm seeing that one in person. However, I did get an opportunity to check this prototype out, the Super Scroll, Clerk, with some elements from all of the Fantastic Four characters, the Thing on the arm, as well as the Human Torch, mixed with Mr. Fantastic. And I, I just actually recently posted a short of this, uh, just going over this portrait again. I love that green skin tone, the details in the mouth, similar type of spaceship base that he's on top of, and then a force field from the Invisible Woman. Just got a little super scroll, true believer here next to it. And then a classic piece, guys, the Batman Sanity, the Nightmare Smoke version, which I did review this one back in the day as well. I've reviewed so many of these pieces from in this gallery, it's crazy. Actually, uh, I found the original art to this by David Finch, and uh, I think it's Jimmy Reyes in uh, Sang's office. So then you have the Wonder Woman Courage. This is the marble version. I reviewed the color version of this one actually, which we'll see displayed as well. I was always digging the portrait on this Wonder Woman here. You got the Wonder Woman Courage. And then the Superman Justice. Wow, man, these pieces look so crazy in person. They have like this translucent, purple, blue kind of tone to them. Here's Doomsday. Forget if that's Mongol, I'm pretty sure it's Mongol. Then you have Cyborg Superman, the Fortress of Solitude base, Lex Luthor, and then Superman in the center with the bright red and blue. What a great trinity with these concept pieces with them surrounded by their villains. And the last ones in this case, we have some Star Wars pieces and quarter scale. You got the Boba Fett. This is probably the best quarter scale Boba Fett. I always liked this piece, even though I was never much of a Star Wars collector. Fully sculpted, love the flame. Iconic look for Boba Fett. And then over here, we've got the Darth Vader set. So you've got young Anakin Skywalker, the Tatooine base. Then you have Anakin before he goes full Darth Vader. 
This looks like right out from episode three at the end where he didn't have the high ground. <laughs> Blue lightsaber, hooded portrait. He looks like he's already turning into the dark side. And then speaking of which, Darth Vader with a sculpted cape. I don't think I've ever seen this piece. And you've got that Empire Strikes Back inspired base. And then of course you have Luke Skywalker and the rebel pirate suit. Got the snowy base. What is that from the Battle of Hoth? Let me act like I know what I'm talking about here. The visor's a nice touch. But that is everything in this first case. Let's get a total shot of it all. I want to say this was designed by Maju Case, but I'm not 100% sure. All right, while we're here, from the Uncanny X-Force line where Archangel and Apocalypse come from, we have Wolverine. So the base is very similar. It's got those same kind of futuristic tendrils with the like Egyptian hieroglyphic type of pyramid base. Leg is wrapped up. And then you have Logan. Now what I first noticed about this piece was how shiny the claws were. And then you have a separate torso with its own little base. So it doesn't have his arm up. What's going on over here? So it looks like this was where Samurai Killer Croc was and he is at SGCC. So you're gonna have to check out that video if you wanna see more of that. But this portrait, man, both of these portraits look gnarly, man. Quarter scale, Samurai Croc, but guys, let's just take a look at the big boy while we're here, man. The maestro on throne is bigger than you think it is. The, the depth of this piece is unreal. This is the version B that have all of his trophies. You've got the symbiotes here, Carnage and Venom. You've got the Asgardian helmets. You've got the War Machine and Iron Man torsos. I like to think that their bodies are still inside of those <laughs> suits. And then the Maestro on throne, this enormous sentinel head with so many Easter eggs, Mjolnir, Juggernaut's helmet. You've got Namor's, um, what do you call that? His trident. Man, he looks insane too. He's got that crazy look in his eye. You can see Silver Surfer's board in the back, Cap's shield right front and center. And then more of the trophies. You have helmets here from Black Panther, from Magneto, Ultron. You've got Doom's mask, Nova's helmet, Professor X, uh, Cerebro, and Doctor Strange's cloak. Oh, and we got Stormbreaker here from Beta Ray Bill. Let's swing around to the back really quick. And when I first walked by this piece, I didn't know what I was looking at. I just saw this huge sentinel head and I'm thinking, that's right, that's the maestro. So the back is as detailed as the front. And again, guys, I don't think, can you grasp how large this piece is? Destroyed surfer board. This piece is really something else, man. All right, so onto some more X-Men. I did review this one, this is Rogue. She's on a destroyed Sentinel base here, holding some of its innards. The jacket movement I always did like. So there we have Rogue. And then we have Jean Grey, which from what I understand is a reworked body. So I'm not sure if it was just a pose or how, what, it, what was reworked. She looks good. Maybe she was a little bit more stiff before, but now she seems a little bit more natural. Colors look great. Love that portrait with the whited out eyes. Got the red hair flowing. And then let's move on from Marvel to some DC stuff. So from Dark Knight's Metal, another big boy. This is Batman on bike. Man, so much is going on here. So you have these creatures from hell at the bottom. This guy's got his blade in his mouth. It's giving me like a pirate vibe. Very Walking Dead inspired. Even got this guy with a cowboy hat, the wood tree with the vines hanging down, and this bike. If one thing that XM Studio is gonna do is gonna be extra detail on motorcycles. 
Love the bone kind of exoskeleton of it. Such a nice touch. We got the bat skull here. And then all the details again on Bruce, the buckles on those boots, the texturing all over. Man, this big sculpted trench coat that is uh, reminiscent of his cape and cowl. And then he's got this large scythe type of weapon. The wrap going all the way down it. And then we have Superman from Death Metal. Yeah, these are both from Death Metal. So there's gonna be one more character for this piece, which will complete the Trinity, of course, with Wonder Woman, Superman engulfed in flames. Did you ever think you'd see it? He's got that dark side infested right arm. Nice texturing on the shirt here. Big Superman logo. And man, Superman exerting so much rage. You can see the veins and the tendons in his neck. The detail on the tongue and the teeth look great. Much different take on Superman than what we're used to. We do have a couple of Deadpool pieces here. Oh, Kidpool's a new addition. So here's, first of all, Lady Deadpool. And they all have these matching kind of carousel bases. She had like a little piggy uh, carousel ride character. Then she's got her sword with head pool chomped down on it. And if you guys follow Rob Liefeld on Twitter, it seems like we might get some type of version of the Deadpool core in Deadpool 3, but not confirmed. Then we have Kid Pool with Dog Pool, which is everything but confirmed as well. Or all but confirmed, I should say. He's holding the blade in his mouth. So much going on on the base. And you got little Kid Pool here. Love that expression, very Deadpool-like. And then a piece that I did review, which was another very innovative take from XM Studios, making it look like he's literally coming out of a comic book panel You've even got text and word bubbles. He's got the classic unicorn uh, carousel ride, his roller skates. And guys, if I said I reviewed it, you can always check out the full review on the channel here. So here are some of the 1-6 scale DC pieces. So Batman from 1972. Got a lunging forward pose here. I like how the arms are kind of tucked underneath the cape. Deathstroke from the Rebirth line. Very comic book feeling. The orange and blue colors really pop on this guy. He's got this big gun turret. This one I did review way back in the day. Jason Todd, Red Hood. This is with a cracked helmet switch out. On the smaller base here, the bricks with the fire hydrant, the manhole cover with Gotham City. And then of course you have the reverse flash in one six scale. You got the red electricity flying everywhere. You got that sinister look from reverse flash. And then we have the collaboration with comic book artist, Mark Brooks for uh, his version of the Trinity. You have Wonder Woman here on the left. They all have matching bases. They were fighting some type of robot. She's got the Wonder Woman shield, this large staff. Classic Wonder Woman costume. Then we have Superman. It looks like he was, they were fighting either some of Lex Luthor's robots or dark sized minions. Got the explosions, the burnt, uh, turrets going up to superman more of a classic look with his big neck oh, yeah there you go so to me it looks like he's fighting yeah some parademons so that's what the green enemies would be and then bruce wayne batman here part of a trinity of quarter scale dc pieces All right, you may have caught this in the background there a little bit. Some familiar pieces and some not so familiar. So I did get a chance to review this one, the Ghost Rider on horseback, where you have two different versions. You have the cowboy version here with the ball and chain weapon, pistol and holster. And then you have the wraith version with this large cloak, 
flaming skull man both options are so sick i just am a huge fan of this orange painted fire ever since the original ghost rider piece which is here as well and then we have from planet hulk you have gladiator hulk with switch outs that turn it into king hulk the iconic monster from the planet hulk series severed in half of course Make sure to check out my review of this guy if you guys want to see more of it and the assembly and everything. Uh, and this one, one that I have not seen in person until today, you've got Venomized Hulk. So uh, Bruce Banner destroyed laboratory base, which looks like it was housing the symbiote. Big mistake because it's free and it's got one of the Avengers most powerful heroes being taken over midway through, but you could switch that torso out and it's got even more of venom taken over so man got the green tinge on the eyes kind of a nod to the gamma radiation but the venom green saliva symbiote wrapping all around him what a large crazy piece right here guys <laughs> all the tendrils and then from marvel cosmic we got nova richard Ryder. Kind of to go with their Guardians of the Galaxy line, if I would assume. Similar type of space vehicle that he's busting out of. The wispy blue flames. And this nice action pose, looking like he's about to slam dunk on y'all. The mouth details are incredible. The teeth and the tongue. We, you know, we really need to get a quarter scale Annihilus. That would be dope. Moving down, we have the Alien Hive Warrior, and there's a whole entire wall of Alien and Predator as well, but this is just the first of many that we'll see. You got all the hatched eggs littered around the base. Crazy piece. And then some products from XM Studio. So it has a cleaning kit. They have some mugs and some uh, camper, mu and camper mugs as well. And then you have a little box which has these kind of plucked out styrofoam pieces that you can store your switch outs and not have to package them up all in the box. So XM Studios does have a variety of statue accessory uh, kits, which include dusting brushes. All right, and on the other side of the middle display here, we have some unique pieces. These are the four horsemen. So this one we have Pestilence. So kind of taking an IP that is not owned by anybody and creating highly detailed sculptures out of them. Look at that snake-like tongue coming out the bottom with pestilence riding on top. Beautiful yet disgusting at the same time. She's got like these tendrils coming out of the back of her head to look like her hair. She's got the bow in her left hand. And man, let's just swing back again. The arm coming out. Looks like it actually needs to be pushed in a little bit, but I'm not touching it. <laughs> and then we have Famine. So Famine is on top of a different type of creature. It almost looks like something out of the movie Tremor, right? Or Tremors. The teeth look crazy, the inside of the mouth, and then he's controlling it with what looks like some kind of bio uh, wiring coming out of his wrist. Got the kind of T-800 Terminator inspired look here. Very cool, unique character. And we have war on horseback, if that's what you want to call it. So it looks like there's three out of the four horsemen. I'm not sure if the other one is just not ready yet, or maybe it's at SGCC, but an armored beast that war is riding on. He has got his armor on as well with the battle cry pose. And something totally different underneath it, <laughs> more of the Disney pieces. So you got Mickey, uh, and mini in red love that high gloss shine and then you have mini in color here and something very similar to the batman sanity but it's the fantasia diorama it looks like a bunch of scenes from the movie the musical animated musical pretty cool just in time for disney 100 then here we have some characters uh, from Frank Cho. So you have she, uh, Sheena, the Jungle Queen. These look to be about one six scale if I had to guess. I mean, it could be quarter scale. Got the little compy dinosaurs in the back. 
Jungle Queen here. And then Aphrodite 9. This is what I'm not familiar with. She's next to Sheena, so I'm wondering if this is another Frank Tro creation. I'd be willing to bet that it was. But Aphrodite. All right, I don't really want to cut the edit just to give you the scope of this gallery. So we have a ton more pieces to look at. Let's go to one of the most recent reveals from XM. We have their Bane in both quarter scale and one six scale. Quarter scale is not a worldwide license, but one six is. So good news for one six scale collectors. You got this Rocky destroyed base, one of the Venom containers on the bottom. Got the detail on the boots texture on the pants looks like he's breaking out of his cell gripping batman's cowl here the muscles ripping everywhere classic bane you got to have the tubes going out of the back of his head to the pack on his back and real quick look at the detail on the floor in here i had to ask if i was even allowed to step on this which you are and then the one six scale version if you guys are interested in these, make sure to check out the XM Studios site to see which version comes with which type of switch outs because I did see people saying uh, or asking if the 1.6 comes with this or that. So refer to them before anything. All right, moving on. We have uh, the Witchblade statue. This looks to be quarter scale. I'm digging these little creatures on the base here. I was never a Witchblade guy growing up. I'm pretty sure this is Mark Silvestri. I could be totally wrong on that. We got the bat type creature wrapping the wings around the base. This creepy little guy. And then the beautiful Witchblade. And in the back, a piece that I'm expecting sometime soon the Legendary Beast in collaboration with XM Studios, one-third scale Hulk. So there are multiple versions of this guy. First of all, you've got the gray version, which has that Jack Kirby-inspired portrait, but the blue eyes, blue jeans. Guys, this thing is huge. Got those huge feet with that storytelling base, which legendary beast has been doing so you got the first version of hulk all the way to the maestro joe fix it in the middle get more story stuff in the sides here bruce banner changing into the hulk and then you had three versions of the green so you have the ultimate edition which comes with all three torsos then the jack kirby one which is the one that i got if you get the Ultimate Edition, it does come with the two additional uh, bases so that you can display these torsos. And then here we have, I forget which one is the modern one. This, Cause this one does look modern. And then you have this kind of rage. Yeah, this is the modern rage. That's what it was. And the one in the middle was just what, the premiere edition? Guys, this piece is enormous. I think it's gonna look so good with the other Avengers pieces. Moving on, we have the Dark Side vs. Justice League diorama, but this is the faux bronze one, which has this great like oxidation look. It's got like a gray base with these green highlights. And then on the shine, it looks so good as well, man. You guys may have seen me review the colored version, which is on display next to it. Always been a sucker for these huge dioramas. And it's so cool to see the different versions just next to each other like this. One third scale Iron Man from Legendary Beast. I did review the prototype of this guy. Hoping to add this one to the collection as well. Tony Stark, and instead of like a storytelling base, it's got like all these different types of helmets from the different armors throughout the years. I don't remember it off the top of my head. I had a whole list of them. <laughs> and then I guess we could just see the back of Captain America, which I do have on display right now. And we'll, we'll get to the front. And then of course, Thor. So 
So all of the Legendary Beast pieces, and we'll, like I said, we'll show the front. Then on this wall, we have the Trinity again, but these are all the color versions. The David Finch collaboration, Batman Sanity with color, which this is the first time I was able to see it in person. And man, I really do like it in person with all the villains, all the color everywhere. Looks great, guys. Batman with his robes. And then Superman, I also do like. See, I'm a comic book fan, so I like all the crazy colors. Hank Henshaw, you got Cyborg Superman here. General Zod, you got Bizarro in the back. Mongol, Doomsday, Is that Livewire, Brainiac. I think that the other versions look very classy, but I'm a huge fan of the comic book look. And another one that I reviewed was the color version of the Wonder Woman Courage. Lesser known rogues gallery, but still impressive nonetheless with Ares, with Cheetah, with Cersei. And this is with a more serious look. I liked her screaming portrait on it with this one a lot more. All right, and then, whew, guys, it ain't over. One of the original multi-character dios from XM Studios, one six scale X-Men vs. Sentinel. Guys, this thing is enormous. Unreal how large this is, the base. The characters, because they almost look quarter scale, man. Psylocke here. And you got Jubilee. A nice selection of characters. It was missing some of the heavy hitters like Wolverine, but you've got fan favorites like Cyclops. I'm uh, Colossus, I mean. You have Nimrod on the bottom here. Bishop, which still could use the quarter scale treatment on a solo statue. We've got Beasts here. Get that sentinel head. And then Archangel with a huge wingspan on top. What an impressive diorama. We do have some classic Godzilla pieces here too. So Space Godzilla. We've got these huge crystals poking out everywhere. On his shoulders. I believe this one was at New York Comic Con a few years back. So Space Godzilla versus Classic Godzilla. The Destroyed City, kind of tying it in with those crystals. The long tail swinging around the back. And then there are some busts. So Shin Godzilla, got the kind of fire coming out from underneath. Man, those teeth look crazy. Almost like Barracuda teeth or something. Crazy looking eyes. And then the Godzilla 2001 bust. Very cool kaiju monster pieces. Then onto some Thors. So you've got the modern Thor versus Destroyer, which I reviewed back in the day and the Jane Foster Thor, which has not come out yet, actually. You've got one of Odin's ravens, Jane Foster in a fierce battle pose with Mjolnir. So much detail in this Thor, too, with all the you know damaged chain mail. Looking down at his enemy, ready to put the hammer down on him. Both of them with nice sculpted capes. And then on to some older pieces. Ultron, not so much. I mean, it's a few years old. This one was just so intricately sculpted. The design on his armor was something that was new for XM Studios at the time. I was never familiar with this version of Ultron, however, where he had like multiple arms sticking out and everything. But uh, the detail in the armor was crazy. Like even like the little pistons and such. Now we're gonna go super old school. Natasha Romanoff, the Black Widow. First of all, switch out torso with this gun barrel with uh, ammo inside of it base. Very cool. We got the spider Easter egg on the bottom. 
She's got a blade in one hand, sniper rifle in the other. And then a classic, man, maybe one of their best. The Ghost Rider on bike, quarter scale. At this time, I feel like you've always seen fire as translucent resin, but I just loved the painted look, y'all. A piece that I've owned multiple times still holds up to this day, even though it's an older piece. And then we have some more older pieces from the Inhumans. You have Medusa with lockjaw, quarter scale, hair base with a huge <laughs> lockjaw piece next to her. Innovative, uh, innovative since day one. And so was the Black Bolt because I, if I recall, there was multiple display options for this guy that he could be higher or lower, which is something we ended up seeing with the Vulture as well. But two classic XM pieces, both from the Inhumans. And guys, we've only begun. So if you wondered what all of the quarter scale X-Men pieces looked like together in one room, I love the red Marvel backdrop too, so classy. Let's go ahead and swing through these really quick to see we got Psylocke here and the at the beginning, Danger Room base. Like I said, the traditional Archangel, although he's got that death head switch out. And moving to the front, you've got, we got the beast here on top of the Sentinel hand. Classic Storm, quickly sold out with Highly sought after, still people prefer this storm for their quarter scale collection. Then here we have Cyclops with the separate torso with its own display base. Classic fingers on the uh, visor pose. Man, another top tier XM piece, man, the classic one. And I'm just biased when it comes to this painted flame, man. Jean Grey, dark phoenix, huge phoenix bird behind her. And you gotta love with that Marvel logo in the back, right? It's popping. Then we got Emma Frost on throne. This was also kind of unique too when it came out. She wasn't sitting on the throne, but her just kind of kneeled up against it. And then to have this sculpted piece, but it looks like it's like soft leather. You got the original cable in the back. I remember when this piece came out, man, this was all the rage. Still holds up, man. Still a solid cable statue. They ended up doing a newer one, which we'll see later, which I feel is more comic-y, and this one feels more of a realistic take. Another one that sold out super quick. I remember I was pissed, man. <laughs> Magic, Ileana Rasputin, because I told you I love that painted flame and it had the sentinel hand base. Plus Magic is just such a badass character. I think she had multiple head switch outs, this one with those horns. And then Colossus behind her. Looks like he's fighting some something whether he's fighting pieces of a sentinel or he's gonna throw some debris at his enemy. I feel like this is when I really started to notice the difference doing this kind of enamel-like teeth. All right, then we have Bobby Drake, Iceman, on top of a Danger Room base. I did a review on so many of these pieces, y'all. This had a very unique way it like screwed into the base with like a bolt and a nut and then we have the weapon x first time seeing this one in person and i remember the the innovative thing on this one was making his skin look like it was wet so adding some kind of clear paint application on the top to give it that look got the classic weapon x helmet all those screens in the back And this is actually the first time I'm seeing this in person, man. This was way before this was a line. Their first attempt at a quarter scale Wolverine. Got the sentinel head base. Got the eye gouged out with his claws. You can tell this one is a little bit older as technology has improved better with like skin, app 
skin texturing and paint applications. The unmasked head, and then, wow, man. A classic, one that put XM Studios on the map. The Magneto on Throne, made out of a Sentinel hand. Which now doesn't seem like a big deal, especially after seeing Maestro, but trust me, when this came out, it was crazy. I definitely have a review on that one on the channel. Just like all of the next ones that we're gonna see. Professor X, which there are two versions. This one has that yellow hover chair inspired by the animated series and the 90s comics. Cerebro switch out here. They made a version with the regular wheelchair. And then you got the brown suit Wolverine on top of that feudal Japan building. I remember the big deal on this one was it had bone switch out claws. And then there's another rogue here. I wonder why they have two versions of her out. Probably with different switch outs, but you gotta have rogue next to Gambit. Both of them had kind of a smaller footprint base but still matching with the destroyed Sentinels. The big wave of cards with his kinetic energy. All right, so the Marvel display in full effect with all the X-Men pieces. I'm just really digging this shiny, glossy, red Marvel wall, but not to be outdone, right next to it, you got the blue version, y'all, with the DC pieces. Whew. We got more to cover, man. So we have a lot of the Batman Samurai line. But first, let's look in the middle. The middle has the Sean Gordon Murphy universe line. So you've got two versions of Harley Quinn here. This is the black and white stealth version from Sean Gordon Murphy's Batman White Knight. You got the bag full of money. Moving up, you got that crazy Harley look with the revolver in her left hand. And then you have the regular version with her regular portrait. This is from the storyline. So if you read the story, it makes a lot more sense why she looks so regular and has ditched her headdress. Very unique take on Harley, but even more of a unique take on the Joker, or should I say Jack Napier. <laughs> you guys should definitely read the story. They did make a bunch of side stories or continuing in that universe, but the first one is a, is a great read that you should definitely check it out. And the huge bat cycle, standing over 30 inches tall on Batman who's sitting down on a bike with the cape so huge, the wind pushing it back and lifting it so tall up. Multiple switch outs on the bike too, as you can see here. This is my first time seeing this thing in person. So much detail put into the sculpt on this bike. Such a natural looking pose too with his leg holding him upward. Jeez. You know, let's take a look to see the other side of this actually. Yeah, see look, you can see so much of Batman because of the way that the cape is positioned. Got all these exhausts, even the tire tread and the rims. Let's take a look at what it says. <laughs> you got the whole GPS system going on there, all the gauges. Very cool piece. Now on to the Batman Samurai stuff. So this is the one that started it all, but let's start on the left here with the Red Hood Samurai series. Now this is one of those pieces that even if you didn't collect the Samurai line, you were thinking about pre-ordering this one, man. Especially with all the different switch outs. This is more of a samurai look, but he had some helmeted looks that just looked like it could have went with anything. Again, the detail on the armor, whether it's on the torso, on the forearm, the fabric, which is all sculpted. Then you got Dick Grayson, Robin, on top of this kind of bell. The broken wood details are great. They do that a lot with this line, I noticed. We did get a chance, I, I believe we reviewed this one on the channel. Man, sometimes I forget. And then the first one, so this one came out and it wasn't even a line yet. It was just like a Samurai Batman, it's in quarter scale. If I recall, it was kind of made 
so that they were able to do quarter scale DC pieces. So they created their own original line. This is not part of a DC comic series. Although I'm surprised they haven't done something already. I, I thought there was some type of rumor out there that they were gonna make a series. Then we have Barbara Gordon as Batgirl, more of those wood planks, kind of with a stone statue underneath. And then you have her on top here with the armor. Love that kind of samurai mouth mask. And then another motorcycle piece. This one was so much different than the rest. The Catwoman on bike. You have this huge slab of pavement, a manhole cover, her cat. I don't know if that's Isis or if it, it's just a different cat. And then Catwoman. First of all, look at the chain on the bike, the rim. You got the black part and then the pink or purple exterior. Catwoman on top here. She's got her whip and her bag of jewels that she stole, allegedly. All right, and then moving on over, this is definitely a piece that I reviewed. This is the Dick Grayson, but as Nightwing. So similar type of stone statue, and again, broken wood panels. Looks like real pieces of wood, the way that it's painted and sculpted. This guy is armored out. He's got the bow, his arrows, and I love this pose of reaching for the arrows in the quiver. Nice attention to detail on that. And then they continued with the Batman line. So you had Batman Samurai, then you had Batman Shogu, which this was cool because it has like this uh, turntable bat lamp, and it's got all this kind of fine detail sculpted and painted on it. It has a light up feature that really works here. I remember being able to review this prototype years ago. I think we even did it like a live stream back in the day with XM. And then you had the Batman Shogun on horseback. It always reminded me of like the uh, Masters of the Universe horse with the armor. You've got this destroyed Joker statue base. This was all the rage I remember when it came out, man. Enormous horse with the Batman Shogun on top. It's crazy how many pieces are in this gallery and the, the sheer size of some of them. All right, then we have the Joker Orochi statue. Another one that I did review. I reviewed a lot of these pieces, man. The snake statues all around, the top of the building, little Joker Easter eggs. And I remember he had a bunch of switch outs, but this was my favorite one with the long hair flowing, the tongue sticking out, licking the sword. I think we actually gave one of these away too, man, when we had like a subscriber milestone. And kind of similar to Catwoman, you had the Harley Quinn from the Samurai series, but she rolled up on her pink scooter, kind of throwing off the old Samurai vibe and modernizing it a little bit. <laughs> I like the uh, softness on the face though and on the chest, very realistic. All right, then we're on to the Bane Samurai series, quarter scale. He's got this whole kind of, almost like building that he's coming up, up out of. And it's odd to see Bane, but he's crouched down. Like you don't typically see him in that pose. He's got this huge battle ax, very unique mask. And I love how vibrant and green those tubes are. The venom going into the tank on his back. All right, on to the Scarecrow from the Samurai line. I think Croc is the most recent, but before that, I, I think this one was the one that came out prior. Super creepy looking mask, right? Got that wispy fear toxin on the base. And then you have this creature that's forming up out of it. Oh, I remember this one, y'all. The Penguin Daimyo. He's got the gems there. <laughs> You got the penguins there serving him. And he's on this like uh, throne, almost like it's being carried by the penguins. Yeah, I remember he had that big umbrella. I did a, vi a funny video on this one with a nice intro. You guys should check it out. Then we got the Deathstroke with a crazy, huge statue head base. Almost looks like it's zombified. 
Then you got Slade Wilson, orange and blue metallic armor. This is the unmasked portrait. Old man Slade gripping his sword from his back, kind of similar to Nightwing. And the last one, the beautiful Poison Ivy. She's got the painted face, her monstrous plants. She's got her fan. The detail on this one is crazy. On her clothing, on the vines coming down and the vines on her legs. Crazy piece. All right, now behind that, this is where all the Transformers normally are, but I wanna say four of them are at SGCC. So we'll see those in person with a new reveal. But we have the Nemesis Prime version of Optimus Prime. Technically they're one tenth scale, but they're comparable to like a quarter scale piece. And this line is so highly detailed, it's really insane. So this kind of evil version of Optimus Prime. Again, empty shelves because they're at the convention. Then here we have the Megatron. I was always a fan of this one and of the Starscream. Very cool modern take on the G1 design. He's got that blade, huge rocket on his hand. And they always had these uh, separate pieces that kind of show what they look like when they're transformed. So you have that handgun. Starscream had the large plane that went with it. And all the detail in this one, man. All right, you got the big boy Grimlock. But before we get to him, we got Rodimus Prime. So here is his transformed version, kind of a shrunk down car. Then you got his Cybertronian base. And this line is just known for being packed full of detail. I forget what that's called. Is that the, the, some type of matrix? We got Rodimus here. Very large piece, his weapons sticking up high. I know they made Soundwave as well. And then we have Grimlock, y'all. The biggest of all the Transformer pieces, but I don't think it's gonna be the biggest for long, but I don't know that I'm allowed to say which piece is gonna take that throne, but from the Dino Boss, guys, his leg is huge. Huge battle axe too over his shoulder. You can see the T-Rex hands on his back here. A shame we couldn't see them all together, but like I said, check out the convention booth tour and we'll see the rest. This gallery just never ends. Now this is considered the vault section because these are a lot of older pieces. Actually, these pieces right here, like this Hulk was made right along the time that that Captain America was made. So one of the first XM Studios pieces, the Bruce Banner Hulk, you can see him here next to She-Hulk. Again, older pieces, but really what helped form XM Studios. Then you have the Captain America Liberty piece. I did a review on this one back in the day as well. So an older cat piece next to the Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes. And then you have one that has still yet to be topped, man. A quarter scale Moon Knight piece, Mark Spector, or whoever he wants to be at this time with the Khonshu portrait switch out, man. And we have one that I always wanted. I saw it in person at Torpedo Comics, but the Submariner Namor on top of this octopus base. And I just always loved how they did the water, similar to how they did the fire with Ghost Rider. All right, now we're on to some Iron Man pieces. So this was another one that was one of the first XM Studios pieces, the Mark, XLII, what is that? <laughs> 17, I don't know. But uh, the more gold and red costume and then the classic Mark Seven, which you can put the base up on its side and he can be displayed in a totally different manner. And of course we have the classic Jean Grey Phoenix with a big translucent resin Phoenix behind her. Again, I'm more of a fan of the painted look, but I did own this one and I did review it. And I was impressed with that big chunk of resin. I mentioned Guardians of the Galaxy when it comes to, who was it? Uh, 
Super Scroll. You have Peter Quill Star-Lord on top of a destroyed uh, spacecraft, classic Abnett and Landing costume, just like with Groot and Rocket. I did review all of these pieces too, man. Little Rocket, big huge turb engine turbine. And then we have another older piece. That Thor is probably around the same age as Cap, Hulk, and Iron Man. I was always a fan of that um, Mjolnir in motion. You got the classic helmet, classic Thor pose straight out of the comics. And an older piece that holds up, y'all. Beta Ray Bill. Again, I reviewed this one as well. The uh, Surtur base. Sculpted capes on these guys. And then the Big Daddy. This is not really an older piece. I mean, now it is, but it's still relatively new compared to those. But the General Thunderbolt Ross, enormous Red Hulk statue, guys. Moving up, we have the in mid jump kick Iron Fist piece, breaking down the brick wall. I was always impressed with this one. I loved the design and the execution of this piece. He's breaking down the door here. Uh, the only thing I wasn't really a fan of was the flaming fist, believe it or not, as much as I'm praising the uh, painted flame, but the Danny Rand Iron Fist. Next to some more classics, you got the Clint Barton, classic West Coast Avengers look, Hawkeye. Got that action pose on top of some destroyed street. Got a fire hydrant there. And where there's ants, there's Ant-Man. So you've got two Ant-Man, really. And I'm not sure if this is supposed to be Hank Pym or Scott Lang. You could say it's both of them or it's the same one going from big to small. Another classic on-bike statue, Frank Castle, the Punisher. Another one that I did own. Man, I kind of didn't even remember this piece. Got a Punisher on the bike, so much detail on the bike. And I remember it had another switch out portrait that I think I liked a little bit better than this one. But I loved all those weapons on the back too, man. On that kind of, the duffel bag on the side of the bike. And then we have some Masters of Magic. First of all, Doctor Strange. I was always a fan of this one, how they made him look like he's floating in air by having his cape being the piece that's lifting him up. And you got the uh, the dark hold, Stephen Strange, and of course you've got the Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Witch with the Avengers Ultron base. Moving up to a classic piece, the first XM Studios piece that I owned was their first Thanos iteration. Got the Tesseract there. It had multiple switch outs for the arms and the portraits. And I remember just being so impressed with the sheer size of this piece. Quarter scale Thanos. And then, man, part of an epic line. I would consider this part of the Spider-Man line. Wilson Fisk as Kingpin playing chess. Doesn't have any of the pieces out right now, but technically a throne piece. Again, back in the day, we've come a long way as far as texturing and such, but still the only licensed quarter scale kingpin. I did own this Daredevil as well, man. And mine had the same kind of issue with not being able to key in all the way. <laughs> Matt Murdock and uh, Electra Nachos. Daredevil and Electra. And then lastly, here we have T'Challa the Black Panther. Crouch down, classic Silver Age look with the cape and cowl on that Wakanda inspired base. That's not all though, I didn't get the top row. You have Mystique, pretty much goes with the X-Men line. Not sure why she's not displayed with them. She's over here solo dolo, just like Omega Red, which is still the only quarter scale Omega Red piece. Uh, this must just be their X-Men display because we have Omega Red here, and then we have Sabretooth. 
right here. So I did review Sabretooth and Omega Red. Check them out on the channel. And then we're gonna move on to some more of the unique IPs. So, man, it's never ending. So these are ones that I'm not really familiar with. So this is uh, Magdalena, quarter scale statue. I'm not sure where this one is from, to be honest with you guys. But it looks like it's kind of like two pieces. In the back, she has this separate statue piece. So you have that, and then you have Angelus. I think these are from a comic book series. I don't know if it's from Top Cow. I think it might be. She's got these serpents here, swords and spears through them, a lot of battle damage. Dope looking statue though. Then you got the wings in the back. And then we have some unique things going on over here. So we do have the uh, aliens and predators, like I mentioned, but then we have the Hulk transformation. This one was so unique because you had Hulk and Bruce Banner giving you this diorama of him transforming into the Hulk. You had like a laboratory type base. Then we have some more Star Wars pieces, the Darth Maul quarter scale statue. Very dynamic, a lot of movement here. And then we had fan favorites, Darth Malak and Darth Revan. So this was from, I believe the Clone Wars. Again, not a Star Wars guy, but to have these in quarter scale, kind of a companion series diorama. These ones still look cool. All right, moving up, another Captain America iteration. This is the ultimate Captain America with the old school Red Skull. Man, I did review this cap back in the day, but this is my first time seeing the Red Skull in person. So he's got this huge flag, classic Red Skull look with the Tesseract here. Got his uniform. Hydra logo. Then we have one. I don't know this if this one has come out yet or not, man. The X-23, Laura Kinney in the all-new Wolverine costume. And then one that I mentioned earlier, you have Cable and Hope. So he had two different switch outs. One where you're holding and rescuing Hope and one of them where he just got more weaponry. So updated version of Cable. And I wanna say he had two swap out portraits as well. And then continuing with Marvel Cosmic, you have the Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, the classic Mohawk look. And then on the top shelf here, we have from Magic the Gathering. So not really familiar with this, but I did review the uh, Chandra Nalar. This one is Liliana Vess. And I gotta tell you, I'm not a magic player or collector, but I'm loving the colors on this piece with the purple and then the pink energy. You got the zombies coming out of the ground and coming after her. And then with Chandra was dope because she's like a fire starter. So what I tell you about that painted flame, although this one did have some translucency to it. If you guys wanna check out the prototype review, I have it up on the channel. And yeah, you know, they're not all Magic the Gathering. This is from Iron Maiden. This is Eddie X, the Chinese dragon from the 2016 Book of Souls World Tour. This is a huge piece, guys. I remember seeing it unpainted at New York Comic Con. And then here we are, fully painted. If you're an Iron Maiden fan, you know who this character is. You're familiar with it. I am not, unfortunately. But very impressive piece. And then from the classic manga and anime, we have One Punch Man, Satama. I remember when this was coming out and I was thinking that maybe XM was gonna get into more of an anime line, but I don't know that they did that much more than this character. A fan favorite, One Punch Man. And then kind of same thing here with the Red Ranger. We got the quarter scale Red Ranger and he even had the gold shield on his chest but I'm not sure that they continued with this line. It was kind of a one-off. I did want it when it came out though. 
just like this one, man, Darkness. And I think Darkness and Witchblade are both from Top Cow. But I have no idea, to this day, I have no idea about Darkness, but I always wanted this statue. Just so much going on. Crazy 90 vibes with like the big teeth and gums. And I hear really good things about Darkness and Witchblade. You got those big serpents coming up everywhere. And this is an older piece too, man. Classic piece. And then you have Witchblade here. Very 90s vibes. And then we got the Org God bust here. The one third scale bust. Doesn't really seem one third scale, but that's what it says. Moving on to Alien, guys. So Alien Hive Warrior. This is what we've seen earlier, but this is the brown variant, which I feel like the brown does a little bit more justice. Again, all of those face huggers all over the base. Then we've got the alien warrior. Man, this one is crazy. So you have this alien that's coming out of the hive, crawling over another alien. And the colors are just so crazy on this piece, man. And it is an enormous statue. Always love the skulls, man. With that translucency. And then with Predator, man. Predator King on throne. This one feels like one third scale. It's called Supreme Scale. I think that's what it was. I think that these were one third scale pieces. Cause this guy is big, man. You can try to see like next to my hand. Yeah, man. Got a lot of intricacies on that throne in the back. Paint job looks crazy. And then man, the Predator Warrior. I remember I was so tempted to get this just because of the scale. The one-third scale predator, look at the detail in the skin. Man. Badass pieces. Now this one I'm not familiar with either, man. Tion Zia Wu D. I'm not even really sure which franchise this is from, guys. Let me know in the comments down below, man, so everybody can figure out which guy this is. Same with Shimbumi quarter scale piece and then we had some quarter scale bus from Marvel and this is my first time seeing the lizard one and the lizard is huge man I don't know if it's really coming across on camera but you got the sewer water here great coloring on the green skin and the scales then you have the rhino quarter scale bus very much has like that 60s vibe to it and this Venom, to this day, people swear this is the best quarter scale Venom, even though it's just a bus. It is highly detailed. Those teeth are crazy. The eyes look good. And actually, I did own this one, and I did a giveaway for it, man, for the Thor quarter scale piece. And then we got the Hulk in quarter scale. Now these other pieces were 1-6 scale, but they were not produced by XM Studios. But still out here on display. I think they had something to do with it. This was by HX. Yeah, now I remember that. I think actually we did review this uh, Black Widow back in the day. I think HX uh, produced them, but used XM Studios license or something. All right, moving on. We have a classic duo. We have Thanos and his mistress Death. Lady Death, man, what can you say about this piece? I did review it as well. So much going on here, packed full of detail. There were so many different switch out options. This one with the Infinity Gauntlet. You gotta love Thanos' devilish grin. And I think it was kind of a, re a redemption piece from the original Thanos. And then Death had two versions, like switch out arms and the head. So she has the human look or like the skeleton look. But what a nice duo right here, guys. Then over here, we're moving into their DC 1-6 scale stuff. So we have some lanterns here with Hal Jordan, Jessica Cruz, and Sinestro. The Sinestro base looks crazy, right? You got this whole beast construct that he's made. And then you have all the weaponry here from Green Lantern. 
Then we have some Superman stuff. So Bizarro Superman. Along with Supergirl. Then we got the recovery suit, black suit Superman. This is like part of the Death of Superman line, which has the one six scale Doomsday, which they ended up making a quarter scale version of this as well. Got the Daily Planet destroyed base. Then we have Joker and Harley Quinn. A lot going on on the Joker base. He's got all his wind up teeth bombs. Got a huge weapon in his hands. Look at the crazy look here too. Great expression on Harley as well, man. She looks like she's really lost it. She's ready to do something that she ain't supposed to be doing. Coming out of this Jack in the Box. And I like how everything is themed. Then you have Aquaman and Mera. I reviewed this Mera one back in the day as well. So he's on this big seahorse, got the colors going crazy. And Mera, kind of an older piece. And then again, oh, here's Red Hood once again with the helmet switch out that I mentioned. And then Deathstroke again, which we've seen on top of that big weapon. Then we got our speedsters. So we did see this one on display already, the reverse flash, but then you have uh, the flash on top of the cosmic treadmill. We got another Trinity here in one six scale with Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman. Got the Fortress of Solitude base. Got Gotham over here for Batman. And then mascara for Wonder Woman. All right, then we have Shazam with Black Adam, comic book versions. Everything paired up. Then we have the Lex Luthor. I always was a fan of this one too, with this Superman outfit, with that blue armor. And then the Super Sons, Damian Wayne and Jonathan Kent, Robin and Superboy. On the other wall, there are more one six scale DC. So we have Catwoman here. She's on a Gotham base as well. And then we have Cheetah. Kind of got like a jungle temple base going on here. Up top here, we have another version of Flash and Reverse Flash. These are the classic versions. And I love that kind of whirlwind hand that he's got going on. It was also made in quarter scale, which we'll see in a little bit, but matching bases here. Another option for the speedsters. Then we got this huge dark side, which almost feels quarter scale, but in one six scale next to Cyborg, both from the Rebirth line. Down below, we got the main man Lobo, another one that's available in quarter scale and in one six scale. This one being the one six scale with so much detail on the bike and on the base. Everything from that gas tank, him holding dog in his hand, ready to launch him at you. And then you have this diorama, which this is the first time I'm seeing it from Batman Ninja. You've got the Sengoku Joker, the Good Smile Joker and Ninja Batman. What a dynamic Dio, very cool. Then we have a bunch of Batman pieces. So Batman the, from uh, the 80 years. Again, Batman 1972, which was on display out front. And then Batman Hush, Jim Lee, Scott Williams, Jeff Lowe, Swamp Thing, which was also done in both scales with the Dr. Fate Easter egg. I know it has two different torsos when it comes to the quarter scale piece. You got Zatanna. Love that book of magic opening up with all the doves. Got the octopus tentacles on the bottom. And then that Mark Brooks Trinity, but here it is in one six scale. 
So a lot of options, guys, for one six, one fourth. Here is the Frank Miller Dark Knights Returns. Another kind of statue with the oxidization, that crazy teal color. The older Bruce Wayne with that bigger chest. He's got that rifle uh, grappling hook. And then the last ones here, you have Hawkman and Oliver Queen Green Arrow. Man, so many one six scale DC pieces here, guys. Let's take a, a wide shot of them all. So you have everything on this side and over here. I promise there's still so much cool stuff to show you, including the Batcave. Take a look at the art though for the Batman Shogun. This was an art print that was available for purchase too. Now, as we bend the corner, you can kind of see where we started from back there, but let's start on the left here for their Dark Knight's metal line. So quarter scale murder machine, which is basically if Bruce Wayne was evil and became cyborg in a dark multiverse. I love this kind of like computerized, pixelized formation that's happening. Then we've got the Robin King. This is from Death Metal, a new character creation and XM didn't waste any time producing a enormous statue for it. I love this kind of like symbiote looking Batman over his shoulder too. Pretty, pretty cool. And then we had two versions of the Batman who laughs. So this is from metal and you had the Robin crows on the base. You had the Wayne tombstone. And then you had Batman who laughs with the chains and his huge wings forming out of the cape. So that was from metal. And then we have the death metal version. This one was super cool, man. So you had all these kind of like slave Bruce Wayne's on the base. Ball and chain here looks crazy. And this is kind of like the Batman who laughs King version with this throne type of mask. So you can get an idea what these guys look, to, look like together. Down below, we have the Dawnbreaker statue. This is my first time seeing a lot of these in person. So the evil Bruce Wayne with the Green Lantern power ring. The green is so vibrant on that base. It's got a torso stand with that other torso. Then you've got the Devastator, the Doomsday Bruce Wayne hybrid, which if I recall, transforms himself into this beast to combat a evil Superman. And then we have the Drown, the Bryce Wayne, the kind of Aquaman, Aqua Girl version of Batman. Cool little base here, right? You got the water, similar to the Namor with that kind of execution and this sea creature here. Then in this section, we have the Red Death version A. This is the Flash, evil Flash Bruce Wayne in the red costume and I like how his face has those veins like it's being taken over by evil. Bats everywhere. And uh, we'll show you the other side of the reverse flash version, just like with the Merciless. So this is like the Ares God of War Batman on throne. You got the red costume or red armor I should say. And then let's go around and look at the blue. So yeah, here's the back of the red version and then you have the blue armored version. So quarter scale, Dark Knight's Metal. And then the Barry Allen version B, which is like a reverse flash kind of homage. This one with the helmet on. All right, and then on to quarter scale DC, we have quite a few pieces to go guys. <laughs> and something super special, but here you go. Kyle Rayner, quarter scale Green Lantern, super sick piece making this kind of Voltron construct. He's on top of it, he's got missiles and rockets flying everywhere. Very nice pose and battle expression. Then we've got Supergirl coming out of her spaceship that brought her to Earth. 
And then the big boy quarter scale Doomsday, which I did review this prototype too back in the day. So that was offered in both scales. Very cool. And another one that I, I reviewed this one, I think I still have it actually. Quarter scale version of Lobo, which had more going on on the base, including these speakers and the, these green kind of cloud plumes with like those poor tortured souls trying to escape. This time he's got dog on the ship with him. He's not throwing him. Although I believe that is a switch out option. Yeah, because it's basically from here on out the same as the one six scale. <laughs> Super rock and roll pose. Moving up, we've got Zatanna in quarter scale. Very nice, look at the base, man. The gold really pops. All of these creatures coming out of her um, her tre treasure chest. Oh yeah, but that's right, we did see it in quarter, uh, in one six scale with the book here. See, I'm more of a fan of quarter scale. I feel like you get so much more out of it. Just like with Swamp Thing, so this time with both torsos being displayed, this is the one that we saw for the one six, but the one fourth also has this torso. And I love how they have the absolute swamp thing by Alan Moore in the back. That's a nice touch. And then the quarter scale version of the Dark Knight Returns, Frank Miller. And it looks like the base might be a little bit toned down with the teal. But otherwise, there you go. Yeah, then everything else I think we've seen already in one six. Now the flash, does have another torso with a nice little torso base. That's cool. And then same thing with reverse flash. So the quarter scale gave you also a different torso. So that was a cool reason to up it up for that scale. And then I don't think we did see this one. So you have that modern or classic even uh, 90s version of Catwoman. I like the safe with the jewels. She's got the cats playing around everywhere. And then she's got that classic purple costume. Again, showing some love to the comics. And man, one of XM's best lines, in my opinion, is their quarter scale Spider Man line. But before we do that, let's just catch the front side of these pieces that we saw earlier. So, Legendary Beast, XM Studios, one third scale Captain America. Great line that is currently in progress. So Cap, and then Thor, which this is my favorite Thor statue, man. It's just so stoic. And it just gives me that iconic, classic Thor that I love. Although I don't use the bearded switch out. And then this was a, a one seven scale. So they were doing something new. This was an impact edition where they weren't going quarter scale, but they wanted to give a huge elaborate base so Juggernaut busting through Xavier's school for gifted mutants. I don't think this line really took off though. I don't think they did many of this one seven scale. All right, so at one point I've owned all but three of these statues on display here. Let's start with one. Well, many of these still hold up to this day, man. Quentin Beck, Mysterio, these are all quarter scale. This one had three different dome switch outs and they have displayed the one that has like that smoky skull underneath. If you guys are on the fence with this piece and you want it on the aftermarket, don't even think twice about it. Pick it up. They must have had a different piece here that's at SGCC, so we'll see that at the booth. Then we've got Craven the Hunter, which was cool that it had a huge quarter scale lion, but it suffered from a lot of like approval issues that kind of changed the whole dynamic of this piece, but it is still the only quarter scale Craven statue. Moving on, one of the more recent additions to this line is the Doc Ock on the side of the building. He's got his sack of gold coins. Incredible piece, guys. Doc Ock, again, only quarter scale version. Definitely still holds up. You know what? A lot of these are gonna be the only quarter scale version. We still have Electro here, and I wanna say this was an early Daniel Bell sculpt, if I recall. Always doing something new. They have the rubber cables here with Electro holding it in his hand. One of my favorites, although I displayed it with both sand arms. He had two switch out arms, one with sand, one with skin, and two different portraits if I recall. But the Sandman, 
uh, Flint Marco. Love the texturing on this guy. This piece holds up to this day. They all do, man. This Vulture, where you can display it on three different parts of the base, changing the height of it, the destroyed bricks and wood, the wingspan, the texturing on the wings. I always like this piece, man. I was a sucker for this whole line. One of them I never pulled the trigger on, though. I just, they were all so elaborate, and this one was kind of subtle. And I just never picked up the Felicia Hardy Black Cat. And I've never owned a Black Cat statue to this day. And I also decided not to get this one at the time because of the perspective base and all of the rest having kind of more realistic takes, but Spider-Man and Mary Jane in quarter scale coming from the Daily uh, Bugle building. And then we have the first red and blue quarter scale Spider-Man. This is the first one XM did, huh? I think they have a new one with the symbiote now. They have a few more Spider-Man pieces that are coming out that we might even see this weekend. But quarter scale Spider-Man, it had a bunch of different switch out torsos if I recall. Then the Iron Spider with metal legs that are, that actually articulate all of these pieces. You can loosen them and display those spider legs however you like. And I didn't end up picking up the Gwen Stacy one. I think at the time I just ran out of space but um, it's a great option for Gwen Stacy or Spider-Gwen. It's more of an early iteration of that character. And uh, has a regular base to match the rest of the line. One of the earlier ones too, man. The Dr. Kurt Connors, the Lizard, sewer base, ripped trench coat, all sculpted. Scales look great, the teeth. He had two different switch outs. This one was like the more Tyrannosaurus Rex inspired portrait. Crazy piece. And then on to the Grail, baby. The Mac Gargan, the Scorpion, with switch outs to give him the classic look or a modern take. And it just sold out so quick and was so sought after. And I don't know to this day if you could get this for a good price. One of the other newer ones was the Norman Osborne Green Goblin more of a modern take on the character as well. You got him with a crazy look in his eye, hurling pumpkin bombs and riding on the goblin glider with a base that matches many of the villains from this line. And although I didn't own this one, I did review the prototype of the Rhino crushing down on a New York City taxi cab with the first appearance of Rhino homage on the license plate. This was a cool one too, man. Very similar to the quarter scale buzz. And then the symbiotes, man. So we have Cletus Cassidy, Carnage on top of the building. I did own this one, one of my earliest reviews. And this one I owned so early that I didn't even review it on the channel. But this was like the first true quarter scale Venom that had the mass and presence that you wanted from Eddie Brock. Great portraits too. I feel like it had three different portraits if I'm not mistaken. Plus a kind of origin inspired base with the clock tower. All right, now walking out of this section, I don't think I'm gonna to spend too much time here just because I'm not really familiar with Ultraman, but they have a life-size Ultraman here with light up eyes. A couple of smaller scale figures here. So smaller scale Ultraman. This one is probably at SGCC. Then we've got this black and white version, which looks kind of like the same pose as the life size. So this is the special edition XM Studios, gem mint in the back. Which one is this? Ultraman C type. You got this whole kind of diorama scene where he's larger than life and you've got the regular size kind of uh, helicopter pad. So it looks like it's the same pose, but maybe this is a, a deluxe version or so. Again, I'm not really too familiar with Ultraman. More smaller scale stuff, but this time it has more of a, a diorama theme to it. The Marina Bay Sands. All right, here we got Ultraman SJ55 series. 
Ultraman and Merlinger, which is this creature here. And then you got Merlinger from the Merlion Park. Am I saying that right, guys? Pretty cool little scenery that they got set up here. And the last one in the middle is this epic diorama scene, Ultraman versus Kaiju. So this is kind of like the Batman sanity of Ultraman with all these different Kaiju villains in the back. <laughs> it, it, you know, it reminds me of Power Rangers, which obviously borrows from this, right? Yeah. Or Super Sentai is around the same theme, so. All right, guys, now we're on to something special. All right, guys, you see that sign, right? Bat cave this way. So we are in for something special. Into the bat cave. First of all, you've got plans for Batmobiles and the bat boats. Plans for the bat cave itself. This is just like another display area here. More pieces of the uh, bat cycle. This is very cool too, man. So you have like this theme park inspired bat cave. Let's give it a quick panorama over here. And then we'll go into further detail. So here you have some screens with a bat computer and it's got uh, like kind of first appearance and origin of Batman in the bat cave, giving uh, love to the creators. The sound effects is a nice touch. Then you have like these bat gadgets on the wall grappling hooks and such. Now these pieces are showcasing the individual pieces for the Batcave. So the whole idea behind this Batcave that XM Studios still wants to do this, has not been released yet, is to kind of make this Batcave that you can add pieces as you like. Maybe you can add the Batmobile here, or you can add this section for the Batboat, which is pretty dope actually. Get some more weaponry on the wall, and then the bat cave itself. This enormous, I want to say maybe 120th scale bat cave. And like I said, these pieces are designed to kind of click in and click out of these beams so that you can add whatever pieces that you like. Right now, you got like the red hood, you got the big coin, the T Rex, you've got the suits for Batman and Robin and Batgirl. Here you have Batman on his chair with the screens. And like I said, this piece right here, this circular piece, or this bat boat, you can decide whether you wanted to add that or not. You got the lights in there. A very ambitious and unique piece from XM Studios that, again, has not been released yet, but it's still something that they're planning on putting out. Here we have a life-size, well, not even life-size, more than life-size Scarface head. You've got the Joker box, the big Joker card, or I should say Jack in the box. And then these life-size Batman suits that were made just for this Batcave. They are not putting these out in statue form or life-size scale, but just made for the Batcave for XM Studios Gallery. You got Rebirth, the black and gray over there and then the blue and gray. All right, guys, that was literally exhausting. There are so many different sections, over 300 pieces in this gallery alone, but it was an honor to come out here and take the tour of this gallery slash store. Let me know what your favorite section was of the XM Studios store in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and make sure to check out the SGCC coverage and my Singapore travel vlog. Y'all stay minty fresh. Peace.